Hey, hey, fam, and welcome to the first mini-sode here in Nostalgia Week. We are excited for you today. Today, we are talking all about nostalgia in popular culture, and I think we're about to lift the veil for you on a couple of things that have come forward that you might not even be aware are at play. So get ready for nostalgia and pop culture coming at you now. Here we go. Do you want what you want sooner rather than later? Do you find yourself growing more effectively in environments where people are growing alongside you? Well, we have the conference for you. Do you love going to events as much as we do? Then you want to be in the room for the Further Faster Conference happening October 29th and October 30th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, the Further Faster Conference is headlined by our dear friend, mentor, and business partner, Joseph McClendon III. And trust us, you're going to want to be in the room. This is two days jam-packed of material that will help you grow personally and professionally. And if you're wondering how to make a million dollars in 10 years, you have to be in the room to hear the strategy that Joseph is going to share. It is phenomenal. Go to neuroencoding.com slash FFC to learn more about the Further Faster Conference coming at the end of October. We hope to see you in Vegas. And now back to the show. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore our complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Angel Phoenix Productions. So when we look at nostalgia and its role in pop culture, we're really seeing this trend across all kinds of different industries that is capitalizing on nostalgia. For instance, haven't you noticed that there's not very many original movies coming out? And if they are coming out, they're not hitting blockbuster status. Look at everything in the Marvel universe. It's building from comic books that were loved by generations before and bringing us characters and new stories within a framework we already feel nostalgic for. That's just one industry, but truly this is happening across the board. Yeah, well, let's think about and just dive a little bit into that entertainment side of things, right? The expansion of the Star Wars universe, the expansion of Lord of the Rings, the expansion even of Game of Thrones, right? Cultural phenomenon. Now we have a prequel that's going on that books aren't written for that, but they're creating it because this is a money making machine. What they know, what is known within capitalism and business is that if we give that nostalgic feeling, we create a sense of almost, I would say, false safety, Mm -hmm. right? You feel safe engaging in things that you already know, like just play along with us for a second. And if you're driving, feel free to keep your hands on your wheel, but raise your hand if you've ever gone to sit down and watch a movie and you pull up Netflix and you're scrolling through all of the things. And instead of picking something brand new you've never seen, you just pick a movie you've seen at least three or four times already. Yes. Hmm. Right. We're all guilty of this. And what we don't even realize is that nostalgia is at play. Right. I love that example because it is something that we all do. Like, why would we do that? Well, we combine a very powerful emotion like nostalgia with a driving human need for certainty. And you can see why this is so powerful for us, because when we see things in our in our surroundings that are familiar to us, it affirms our identity, it affirms our worth, and it affirms our placement in the society. And it gives us that feeling of certainty and it activates nostalgia. Like no wonder this is such a money-making machine. We're seeing this in video games. In fact, I was recently reading an article in the New York Times more Uh, edition newsletter where they are talking about this phenomenon in in video games. All of the major games coming out this year and next year are building on franchises that are 10 years old or plus because those are our players are excited to get their characters back, to get that nostalgic feeling, to hear that music again and see those maps again and, and get back into that feeling. We're seeing it in video games. We're seeing it in movies. We're seeing it in songs. Like even think of all the new songs. Many of them are remixes of old songs. Elton John is like, I will cash in on (laughs) this nostalgia train. Thank you very much. (laughs) Oh, certainly. Oh, we're seeing it permeate all kinds of industries. And it's really, it's interesting because once we become aware that nostalgia is at play and understand that, yes, it's enjoyable and yes, we should engage in it just 
engage consciously because businesses know that nostalgia can drive capitalism and can drive you to continue to spend money with that business. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If they're providing a feeling and the feeling that you're looking for is the feeling of nostalgia and you get a a good control over it and you feel like, man, this is something I want to engage in, then go for it. Just make the exchange consciously, understanding that you might have some emotions ruling your decision making at play that you aren't aware of. Uh, If you listen to the main episode for this topic, then you know we talked a little bit about our experience with Disney. Well, once this veil was lifted after this most recent Disney trip for us, I'm looking at my clothes in my closet and I have a lot of Disney shirts and I no longer feel like wearing them. And because of this veil being lifted, I'm realizing I was wearing them out of a sense of nostalgia, out of a sense of identity around it. But what was the other function of me wearing that? That I'm giving Disney advertising, that I'm promoting their their, their whole business, that I'm saying I am so loyal to this brand that I'm willing to pay money to advertise for them. And after that veil was lifted, I'm like, you know what? I don't think I want to consciously make that decision anymore. So we are challenging you to make your decisions consciously, understand if nostalgia is at play, and just have this level of awareness as you're making decisions in your coming days and weeks. Don't get exploited, man. (laughs) Your sisters are here for you. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.